What's happening, everybody? John Hendricks here for Saints News Network, coming at you with another recap from Saints Training Camp. Day six in the books. It's Tuesday. A lot of fun stuff. No fans today. Got an interesting practice flow. But of course, before we get into breaking down all the happenings at training camp, just want to remind everybody and shout out to Justin Burgess over at Ben Pro for producing today's show. If you have a business in the greater New Orleans area, be sure to contact Justin for all your health insurance and employee benefits needs. 504-888-8038. Justin Burgess, he will hook you up. He works with accounts like NOLA Motorsports and other locals. Give him a call. Give him a chance. Great guy. Played hockey with him a long time ago. Good guy to know. Solid guy overall. Would not recommend somebody if I didn't trust in them. So thanks to him for producing today's show. Let's get into all the action. So Tuesday, let's start with the attendance part of Saints training camp. Um, Andres Pete, only player not there today. You know, again, this is kind of expected. He's dealing with a quad injury. It's not feared to be serious. Very minor, if in a sense, it's a strain. So we'll see him back at some point. Wouldn't be surprised that when we do see him back, they might ramp him up and be a little bit more cautious. And again, like we've kind of talked about, we touched on it in our recap the other day that, you know, this is going to pave the way for others. So we got to see Nick Saldaveri play a little bit more with the second team today. And, and, and obviously he had a really nice rep against Brian Brisset, uh late in the team drills and stuff. So we kind of maybe touch on that a little bit more. But, you know, look, as far as practice flow today, look, we started outside, no fans in attendance, just the media there. Um, it was another scorcher. Players noticeably feeling it all day. We were, you know, hot, but we also didn't have pads and a, the guardian caps for the mushroom helmet cap things on. And, you know, uh, it, it's, it's brutal, right? You step foot outside, you go check the mail. You know what I'm talking about. If you live in South Louisiana right now, all this heat wave, whatever you want to call it and such. So miserable a little bit. Um, you know, Troy pride was one of the players that exited practice a little bit early, but he did return. We don't know if that was injury related, heat related, but a lot of players hunched over on a knee, getting extra hydration using the cold fridge tub thing or fridge uh, building that they have outside on the practice facility. It's going to be like this, but Dennis Allen saying that they kind of incorporate some of this flow where they might start outdoors and then go indoors, which is what they did today. So about after a little bit after an hour ish, they went inside uh, and finished practice up from there. They may start inside on some days and then go outside, or they may just stay indoors. So obviously, heat's a factor. We've got fans coming back on Friday that'll be here for the weekend. So that's something to pay attention to. Now, as far as the action goes, look, we had plenty. It was a uh, tight end Tuesday. You're going to hear that from a lot of people today, uh, just because of how active everybody was. We're talking about Jimmy Graham. We're talking about Jawan Johnson, Foster Moreau, Jesse James, Lucas Kroll, all making impact plays today. You know, in all sorts of uh, some sort of form or fashion, really cool to see it all unfold. You know, we got to see seven on sevens today. Um, you know, the day before we got to see some one on ones. Uh, that was really entertaining, obviously. But seven on sevens, three team drills. Let's kind of get into some of the main action. Before I do say some of that, let's just kind of touch on a few general notes that I touched on in Saints.media or Saints.media, si.com slash NFL slash Saints, if you want to go there. Saints Media Medio get you the same spot place, just shorter, right? Uh, you know, look, a lot of special teams. Lou Headley had a pretty good day as, as far as punting. We charted, uh, you know, all of his hang times. He had one punt, probably definitely wanted to have back, um, you know, but other than that, he had some really good hang time. You know, they started out punting from basically the shadow of their own goalpost, if you will, a, a tight punt formation, move up five yards or, you know, a, a few in between, then punt it some more until you get all the way across maybe about midfield. And then you work on directional inside the five punts, real pretty punt, real pretty ball. Um, you know, look, he had some, some really good, some boots and Kirk Merritt made a really good play downing a punt inside the five. He also had a really good, uh, a gunner rep working against two players today uh, that, you know, look, he stood out a little bit on special teams. So that's, that's always good to see because in these battles with gunners and jammers and stuff, this things that matter, right. And sticking with that Hudley had a pretty decent day and, you know, Blake groupie, uh, he's human. He's not a machine, right? He's quoting Rocky, Rocky four to be exact, which I know some people don't really like that movie. I do guilty pleasure to call it for that, but I like the montages, but at any rate, 
Uh, Groupie ended up missing his first field goal of training camp. So now it seems like we're on an even playing field. Competition's there. You know, Dennis Allen talked about it after practice is asked. And look, it's 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 going to come down to it. And, it, it, you know, who makes them in preseason, I think, and how that works. But it's also hard to gauge because you're also banking saying, well, the offense is going to, you know, have some some points up on the board and stuff or getting those situations. So real close to call right now. You know, again, I won't necessarily say it six days through camp. But, you know, again, I feel like right now we're in a space where until Headley or Groupie does something that's going to beat out Will Lutz and Blake Gillikin, then there's not much to talk about. Um, you know, some other players that flashed for me today, Nephi Sewell, you know, in coverage and run defense, run support. I thought he flashed a little bit for me. Keith Kirkwood, you know, this is a guy, a veteran. We talk about the receiver room. He's a guy that, you know, obviously – the outlook on the final 53, just depending. We we know four, five, and six on the roster, assuming they keep six receivers, is kind of up for grabs. Kirkwood's a veteran in this league. He's been around a long time. He came back to New Orleans. He's somebody that quietly looks pretty good, and you just don't really, I guess, have to worry about too. It's going to be interesting to see between him and Traquan Smith what they do. I think it's going to come down to some in the preseason action. But, um, you know, those are two of the standouts. And, again, I mentioned Sal DeVere. There was a rep. Let's see, make sure I get it right. It was a rep and team where he was paired up against Brian Brisset. Uh, you know, look, I was focusing more on Saldaveri, right? And he had a really solid rep against Brisset. Tried to kind of do an inside swim move and rush. And Saldaveri, good hand placement, good block, moved him to the outside a little bit. And so those are always good to see because everybody's asking about, you know, Brisset, Foskey, and Saldaveri right now. And it's easy to highlight – the guys that are in the skill positions like Kendra Miller, who looked good again today. He looks great. I'm really impressed to see – or really going to be – I'm impressed with what I've seen from him. Really impressed to see more. I want to see more. He's left a good lasting impression here, so we'll see more of that. But going back to – and, and him, him and A.T. Perry, obviously those are two of the ones – skill position so they stand out but you know some of these other guys that work in the trenches or a jordan howden those are guys that we want to focus in a little bit more and i think when preseason comes along it'll be something that we pay more attention to right but overall you know you look at today a lot of activity a um, lot of stuff we've seen from the tight end room look i i really like the way we touched on jimmy graham yesterday uh i love how physical he still plays for a guy that's 36 to still see that really good um i'm Wondering who is going to, you know, be his match, right? And if it leads to extracurricular activities at some point. But look, he was active today. Lucas Kroll had a pretty good day. Jesse James, a veteran who's worked with Clancy Barone. And, and something to point out of Graham, you know, uh, if you haven't checked out Saints Media, be sure to check out Ross Jackson's uh, piece on Clancy Barone. He has a wealth of knowledge. He's worked with guys like Algie Crumpler in the past or Kyle Rudolph when he made the Pro Bowl. I mean, this is a guy who does a lot of things uh, with his tight end room that's so diverse and so versatile right now and not even talking about like Taysom Hill and stuff. Um, but, man, just checked out that article. But he had some great quotes asked, uh, uh, you know, Foster Moreau about him the other day, just the attention to detail and the, the professionalism and just the things that he does with that room is reason to be happy. And this is a very underrated group on paper, but I think they have a very great outlook for this team. But, you know, you talk about today, play of the day was Foster Moreau. Um, it was on the second to last team series, Jameis Winston. Hard views at some point, but – you got Jameis Winston ended up getting six reps on that on his particular series. He hits Foster Moreau out near the sidelines. It's a jump ball. Foster goes up for it, makes the catch. Beautiful moment, kind of intermediate uh, kind of gain, if you will, and it gets good reaction from all the offensive players and stuff. And of course, it's been a competitive battle throughout camp. So the defense wants to win, obviously theirs. The offense wants to win there, but it's been very, very good healthy competition and look i'm excited to see more of this and and more but it was a tight end show today not saying that other you know positions didn't do things you know again we talked about kendra miller or, or kirk merritts or some of the stuff on special teams but you know look it's um uh, more or less just one of those things where the camp flow i think and i've touched on this too we're less than two weeks away from a first preseason game. We're also getting close to having joint practices. I think those are going to be a little bit more valuable too, because that's really going to be kind of, you know, maybe some hit and some extra thumping, if you will. And so, um, you know, it's hard to think that 
tomorrow will make two weeks until we're out in Los Angeles and, and practices on that Thursday and Friday. But look, good flow to practice. Um, the main things are the Saints are mostly healthy. You know, one other little injury towards the end of practice, I did see Lynn Bowden Jr. He uh, or Bowden Jr. He ended up getting a cart ride to to finish. It looks like something was bothering him. Uh, this is when they were doing gasters and such. Hopefully, he's okay. He's been handling a lot of the punt return duties with Kiki Kute and and obviously Rashid Shahid. So we'll see because it's uh, you know knock on wood they've been pretty fortunate, but obviously some things have happened, you know, Trey Turner's injury was unfortunate too, but um, you know, you look at this, this roster, you look at where things are going. You like a lot of the confidence that a lot of these players are playing with seeing Alante Taylor opposite of Marshawn Lattimore today. Taylor's been getting some work in the slot. Um, you know, he's with the third team one day today. He was with the second team as a slot guy. You know, again, I think that's good for his growth. You know, seeing still things, the pass rush, Peyton Turner continues to make something a play every day. That's exciting, too. I think that a lot of these players, hopefully the light comes on for a lot of these guys. And I don't mean that in a bad way or negative way. It's just that they, they put it together, um, you know, because this team needs it. And when you assemble this 53-man roster, there are going to be some very difficult cups, cuts to make. And I just don't know if you're going to be able to slide all these guys to the practice squad. So it's really going to be fascinating when it comes down to final roster cuts, which, by the way, you go from 90 to 53. So you're cutting 37 players uh, just like that. There is no middle cut down date. There is no like soft date where you go from 90 to 50, uh, 75 or anything like that. So really going to be interesting to see how that plays out. But look for Saints, great action today. Takeaways that it was tight end Tuesday. No Andres Pete. Um, again, another pretty good showing from Derek Carr. Look, Jake Hayner was was pretty dang good today. Um, you know, I, I just have really been impressed with Jake Hayner. I know some people are starting to come around a little bit more on him, but we've been talking him up since mini camp and OTAs. Just got the sense since day one that he looks very comfortable in what he's doing. He's making his his reads. He looks way more comfortable than anything Ian Book has ever presented himself in the time that he's with New Orleans and watching him. But, you know, and I don't mean that as a knock against Ian. It's just you see the confidence from Jake Hayner, and there's reason to be excited about it. I'm really interested to see where they go in preseason. Is it more Jameis? Is it some Taysom, which I would believe Jay Taysom might get some work at quarterback? And then how much Jake Hayner do we see? I don't know if we need to see a lot from Derek Carr, and, and honestly, like Dennis Allen said, I just need to see it sometimes. I don't need to see it always. And with Carr, the investment that they made, there's no reason to risk trying to get this guy injured or anything like that. But, you know, it's uh, another day. We've got one more practice tomorrow on Wednesday. Thursday, everybody's off. We come back Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Starts kind of like a gauntlet, if you will, uh, until Tuesday with some fans coming back. And, and you know, they're only without, allowed to attend seven this year. Um, so there'll be four five and six this weekend and there's one more. So a lot of fun stuff. Keep tuned to Saints News Network, saints.media at saintsnews, si.com slash NFL slash saints. Thanks to Justin Burgess for producing today's show. I'm John Hendricks signing out. Be good people.